Indonesia, one of the largest markets in the world for motorcycles. Approximately 80 million bikes are in the country, with about 85% of households owning at least one motorbike, as it is the main means of transportation. Therefore, a country where motorbikes outweigh the number of cars by a 3 to 1 ratio means that there must be a huge interest in motorcycle racing, right? If you answered yes to this question, then you would be correct because MotoGP will make its long-awaited return to Indonesia in 2022, with its first appearance at the brand new Mandalika Bay circuit. Welcome back to Moto Misha Monde everyone, glad to have you here to finally take a look and examine the Indonesian Grand Prix and the new Mandalika Bay circuit. But first, before we start, make sure to like and share this video, as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more videos like this one. You won't want to miss a video, trust me, seriously, subscribe. Indonesia has only twice hosted a Motorcycle World Championship Grand Prix in back-to-back -back years in 1996 and 1997 at the Sentul Circuit, located not far from the capital of Jakarta. But unfortunately, the Asian financial crisis of 1998 impacted the markets of the so-called Tiger Cub economies in Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines, which suffered severe economic consequences, thus putting an end to dealings with the Grand Prix organization. Fortunately, that history is behind us, and Indonesia, with one of the most important motorcycle industries in the world and where Japanese manufacturers have their strongest market has once again reclaimed its place on the motorcycle spectrum. Construction on the Mandalika circuit started taking place in 2016. That year, CEO of MotoGP and man who makes people offers they cannot refuse, Carmelo Esbeleta, visit to Bali confirmed that Indonesia's return to the Grand Prix scene was going to happen. And in fact, although the circumstances of the health crisis resulted from the pandemic have meant that the premiere of the Pertamina Mandalika International Street Circuit, as it is officially called, whoa, that's a mouthful had to be delayed until the 2022 season. Nevertheless, the Superbike World Championship race in November 2021 was responsible for the circuit's international debut, putting Mandalika on the proverbial map, making it a raging success. But with very different bikes between the World SBK and MotoGP classes and an even bigger gap between the level of the two series tires, it's hard to draw too much attention from what happened then and predict how MotoGP bikes will perform on the new track. But with many of the grid taking the chance to test out the 2.678 mile track, there's enough information to predict how MotoGP machines will fare on this new circuit. The first and probably best unique feature of Mandalika is its location on the seashore where she sells seashells. <laughs> Get it? You know, the famous tongue twister, she sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> anyway, we all have in mind the beautiful images of the Australian Phillip Island circuit, which in some sections offers beautiful sea views. In the case of Mandalika, the sea is even closer, located in the south of the island at sea level. There is a section of the circuit which is located just a few hundred meters from the beach, with exceptional views of hot babes, or hot guys, depending on what you're into. Reminiscent of Phillip Island, more so than just due to its seaside location, it also shares some similarities with the opening, fast, and flowing section of the circuit of the Americas too. All bite without the long straights that follow and the crappy pavement. The main takeaway when looking at the track layout, it's a circuit that favors inline 4 bikes such as Yamaha's M1 and Suzuki's GSX RR, more than the V4s that tend to dominate the grid. That's because it's a track of fast and flowing corners, where the bike will spend much of its time leaned over. All those fast and flowing corners that make up the track suited to inline 4s have one issue that makes life hard for a rider. They all link up, essentially meaning that there's almost no time where a racer gets a break from constantly leaning the bike, apart from on the relatively short start-finish straight. In other words, most tracks have two or three places where you're not hanging off the side of your bike, using your six-pack abs and your killer calves to speed around the corner, instead letting you relax at 350k an hour. However, Mandalika does not offer that luxury, and it's likely to be something that MotoGP's big crop of rookies will suffer from in particular every year. Add to all of that the high temperatures where some are left drowning in their own sweat. Let's just say no rider is going to be able to ask a girl out after the race because he smells like a durian from all that sweat. I mean, come on. The fact that a track that does suit the inline fours doesn't necessarily prevent the grid's V4 machines from being fast. Simply put, Riders at Mandalika typically spend a lot of time on the edge of the tire, and with only partial throttle, something that doesn't particularly suit the V4 and its sharper power delivery. Those bikes are in fact harder to control, slower mid-corner, and more aggressive on tires. And there isn't even a long straight to make up ground with a power advantage. The longest and in fact the only real straight is the start-finish one, coming in at just less than 750 meters, and is definitely more akin to somewhere like the Saxon Ring than Austin's 1.5km back straight. With all those fast corners means that there aren't necessarily many 
any overtaking opportunities either, or at least many that won't take a rather ambitious move to break through. But there is one place an awful lot of the MotoGP action will be centered upon, the very tight final section of the track. Akin to controversial final corners such as those at Magnicourt or Termas de Royo Hondo, it's a fast and flowing corner that tightens into a sharp 90 degree left just before the finish line. I'm sure there will be lots of drama there at this circuit. Although Mandalika has been billed as MotoGP's return to pure road racing, it might be an ambitious description of the track for now. The long-term plan is for the circuit to someday be a public road, connecting a network of hotels and residences around the track. But at the filming of this video, the construction of those are still far away. So is any talk of a road race leaving the circuit very much as a rural venue? Even then though, it's clear that it is very much planned to be a race circuit that is also a road, kind of like Montreal circuit Gilles Villeneuve for F1, which acts as a public park when not being raced on, rather than a road that acts as a circuit, like the streets of Monaco in F1. So all in all, can Mandalika become a stalwart in the MotoGB calendar for many years to come? Will it be a favorite circuit among the riders in the paddock? Well, one thing is for sure. I don't think anyone would be opposed to a full day of racing followed by a nice tuk-tuk ride down to the sandy beach where cocktails are waiting for you to consume while watching the sunset in the distance. If you ask me, that is a fantasy come to life. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you have stuck around this long, hit that like button, drop a comment, and hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Until next time, this is Moto Misha. Check it out. Peace.